Okay, Hosea chapter 10. I had one guy yesterday applaud what, what I do, what I say. And the thing is, some people say, well, you know, you're picking on the church, you're picking on the church. There are three applications for Scripture. Historic. I try to do it historic. This is history. And then there's, you know, uh, doctrinal application. What is the Scripture saying to who is it saying it to? It's talking about Israel, north. I put that with the historic. And then there's a spiritual application, and I try to apply what we're doing to the church. Because the church today is falling in the hands of Israel, and it's falling in the hands of Judah. Israel's gone. They've been taken captive. Judah is gone. They came back, failed, and then got destroyed again in 70 AD. The church will be gone. You know, as I live more and more, I see these I see these churches. I see these pastors who don't help the people. I was thinking of that and I was like, from the first pastor I had, and we've had many problems in my family, and other people do too. I've had not one pastor help or come to us. There was a serious event that happened in my family to a particular member of my family. And this pastor, this well-known, travels all over the world. Well, you know, let the government take care of it. Let the, you know, take care of the, the government options. And when we went to the whole legal mess and it came to the thing, okay, we need help. Well, we can't help you now because it's all done. And then that, that pastor comes back and blames me for everything and my wife. Friend, that's hirelings. I've been in this the very first church. The very first church I was in. We'll get this in a moment. I met my 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 wife Lisa. We were dating, courting, and we went and talked to the pastor, and she got saved. And I went and I asked her to marry her. We pastor said yes. We had counseling and all that. And it came up to an event that one time he he called us into his office. He said, "I'm not going to marry you two." I said, well, why not? What's what, what wrong? You don't come to the fellowships. Sir, well, um, I was, was going to say, ask my wife. She's in heaven. Ask her. <laughs> say, Jesus, Lisa, you stop me lying. And they, no. I talked to many pastors about this thing with Easter and Christmas. Well, we're going to do it anyway. I'm full of it. I don't know what I'm talking about. You want to go to our website and see all the things I've talked about? You want to see all... I'm a doctor of theology. I don't look like a doctor. So when I'm applying to the historical facts of Israel, because this is history, and the doctrinal thing is I'm trying to teach you the, the thing. Some people run in there, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. Uh, let's look at the doctrinal application of that verse. And then I will say, well, why don't you go jump off the Empire State then? Oh, well, but you can do all things Christ for training. You can fly. I can't fly. Then either God's lying or you misapplied a, a verse. And then after I try to give you doctrine, try to give you historical of Hosea, I see the church age period. Spiritual application. Now Israel is an empty vine. There's coming a day that the church will be empty. The church will be gone. Only those that are lost will be left behind. And if the rapture happens during the church service, some will go and some will stay. I believe in this day and age, there'll be church services, and when the rapture happens, they will go through the whole entire church service, go to the chicken house afterwards. Where is everybody? The rapture wouldn't interrupt their service. And what we're going to look at is, is an event that's going to happen in Israel. Israel's going to go into captivity, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the prophecy of 
Assyria coming, but it did happen. You know why Jonah was mad about Israel and, and, and the relations between Nineveh? You know, God told him to go to Nineveh. Because the relationship with Nineveh towards Israel now, it was hatred. And plus, they're Gentiles. Those filthy, rotten dogs. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. So everything Israel's doing, they're doing it for themselves. And that's the church today. Well, invite your friends. Invite people out to church. Friend, let me tell you, that's so the pastor can go, majority of the pastors, not all, so they can go to their pastor's conference, they can go to their pastor's meetings and say, I had 40 people in Sunday school this weekend. I had 300 people at the S-Star service. I know one pastor, almost every two weeks, he's off at some kind of conference. Then he complains he's got to do a lot of driving. You know, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in. And then you just say this prayer. Oh, look, so look how many people said a prayer. And there are people who say a prayer and they did not get their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's an empty vine. You know what's supposed to be on that vine? It's supposed to be grapes. Israel is a vineyard. Isaiah and Jesus. Jesus said, wherefore by their fruits you should know them. There's no fruit. There are churches out there. You know why they closed? There are churches, their doors are, you know why they closed? Because the people got old, they died, they didn't bring anybody in. The pastor got up one morning. He's got that man, and he, he puts his he, he, he puts his Bible on the pole and looks. Like, they're, they're, where is everybody? They're dead. You had your last funeral. The young don't go to church no more. I'm watching this reality TV right now, and I, 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 looks like they're saved. I, I can't judge. And I look at the children. Like, well, the mothers already died. I feel sorry for the children. According to the multitude of his fruit, his fruit, not God's fruit, his fruit, he has increased the altars. <laughs> Friend, the altars is what this, the symbol is of the Baptist church today. Everyone come on up to the prayer altar. Oh yeah, I know we. Could, I know you could deal with the Lord right there in your pew, but come on up to the pure, to the prayer altar because someone in the back row out back there is counting how many people, how many tally marks. Not for God, but for you know. We got a new definition in the church today called uh, numbers, and I'm not talking about the book. It's amazing. I, we were in a Baptist church, a small number of people, and it's still numbers. Instead of deacons, I mean, they got more, they, they got trustees. There's more trustees than there are people that go to church. And one is, it, we call uh, snowbirds. He only comes down half the year. Friend, I'm a trustee. You're not even in that church. It's numbers. And if we can't get the numbers, we'll get the potato salad, we get the fried chicken to bring them in. We were at another church, and, and they, they fed the homeless. And I swear to God, the truth of the King James Bible, there was a woman there, they were going to have a baptism service, and she said right in the middle of the service, you baptized me three times last month, or last year, whatever it was. And they put her under the water. Why did he put her in the water? She already been baptized. That's a tally mark. They don't put names next to those numbers. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. What is that? 
Israel is a fruitful land of God. There's a place in, 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 the, in the law that says there's iron, there, there, there's copper, there's steel, there's gold, there's silver, there's grape, there's fig trees, there, there's goats, there's cows, there's sheep, there's people. It's just a fruitful land. And with that, they made images of, of, of corn, and horses. Have you looked at the 50 state seals? The official seals of, this, of, the, of the 50 states? Connecticut has three great, three or four great minds. That's an image. I think California or Oklahoma, one of them has oak, has oaks, has oxen plow in a field. Have you looked at the United States state seals and see that they got images of what their state represents? Hosea 10.1. And God says, that's unfruitful. That does me no good. And then you cry out, God bless America. There is no fruit for God. You're an empty vine. I talked about yesterday when I grew up as a child. We had, we had next door, we had grape vines, and they were sour grapes. That, that, it's, you can have sour grapes, and you're not going to eat them. And you can walk up to a grape vine if it's got no grapes on them. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. You see, their heart is towards Baal. Their heart is towards themselves. The church today, their hearts are divided. We got Esther, we got Christmas, and they're wrong, they're pagan. And how great my pastor is, and, and the numbers, and how much money I get. But what about God? God is lacking from the churches, and if you don't believe me, look at Revelation chapter 3. Jesus is standing outside the church of the Laodicean church with the door closed. I'm not coming in. you got to come out. Why is Jesus? Because Satan is in the church. Amen the preacher or the preacher at and God says, come out with me. That's today's church age. And I am included. He shall break down their altars. You know, I've always said, I got somebody mad one time when I said, there's coming a day when the church will be raptured. And your wonderful church property will be used by Satan, the Antichrist. I would laugh. I will laugh if, if the Antichrist says, everybody get their mark, their 666. Go down to your old local Baptist church and get it in your forehead or get it in your right hand. Wouldn't it be interesting if God uses the Baptist, uh, the Baptist churches for the Antichrist to get the mark of the beast? And we're up in heaven. Hey, that's a great church building you had down there. You see what the Antichrist is doing? I've been in churches. Oh, you're going to get rewards if you cut the grass. You're going to get rewards if you... Did. No, nowhere in the scripture. Book, chapter, and verse, please. And they'll say, go, bring people to church. Chapter and verse, it don't... Never. No one says bring it to church. The Bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel. Paul went out and preached the gospel to me. He didn't. He shall spoil their images. I wasn't in the church, but I know a church in New London, Connecticut. The stained glass windows are of Jesus and the 12 apostles, black, African, in an African Baptist church. And they worship the pastor. And the pastor, every year, they, they would have this celebration in New London. And this guy would be walking down the street with his bodyguards. Maybe they're deacon. And they remind me, you know, here's this goon. He's got bodyguards. Well, probably not called bodyguards, but still. Some people, their churches, their pastor is the image. Their building is the image. But not God. 
The Catholic Church, their image, the Pope, Mary, but not God. For now they shall say, right now they shall say, we have no king. And their king's going. Not one king in Israel done right. Not one. I'm reading my own Bible, my own person, about Asa. And I just read today, Asa was the worst king in Israel. And he was married to Jezebel. And what's that Jezebel spirit that's in the churches today? Jezebel painted her face. You got Christian women, they got all kinds of makeup. Take the crap off. Now, that's a great expression, the Holy Spirit. You know, we got to get a new Bible to change, paint, to paint your face. Because we fear not the Lord. You know why Israel's going to go into captivity? You know why Assyria is coming? You know why Nineveh is coming? Because they feared not to God. God. The Bible says, fear the Lord is beginning of wisdom. Fear the Lord is beginning of knowledge. They have no wisdom. They have no knowledge because they don't fear the Lord. They fear COVID. Oh my, oh no. America is, is going to get rid of Roe versus Ray. Oh no, we have no more formula. No. Well, you shouldn't have formula. You've been killing babies. It was legal. It's legal now to abort babies. Well, why shouldn't God take formula away? You've been allowing sodomite marriages and getting sodomite privileges. They don't make babies, so maybe God's okay, I'll just pull my phone. You haven't been blessing God. You haven't been thanking God. That's why the grocery store, we went to another grocery store today, and the shelves are just as bare. Because that one day we give thanks to God, that one day, we got to hurry up because we got to go to Black Friday. Hurry up, come on, the ball game, they're going to throw that little pig skin. There is no fear of the Lord. What then shall a king do for us? And they'll get to the point. Well, okay, we got Republican president next election. Well, what's he going to do for us? He ain't going to do nothing. Because you need the king of kings, the lord of lords. That's who will give us a peace. That will give us who, what we want and what we need. Jesus Christ. They have spoken words swearing falsely. I swear to tell, and they got their fingers crossed. Come on, the biggest. I've been in jailhouse ministry for six years. And listen. Well, you know, I didn't do it. I was framed. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah, I'll sign my name that piece of paper. Bankruptcy. I sh to death do his part. I do. And then you get a divorce. You know, it, I don't know how it is, but there are more divorces in America today than there are marriages. I don't know how, but I've read it. I have been where, where parents have dedicated their children at the altar. And we did that with our daughter. And then they fall away and they're in sin today. I look at their Facebook pages. They're in, I, I fear what the children are in today. And making a covenant. And a covenant is agreement with God, supposedly. Well, God, you know, if you get me out of this battlefield, I'm going to go home and I'm going to be that preacher my mom wanted to be. And you get home and you forget about what you prayer. You forget about what you told God. You know, God, you know, this medical thing, if you would help me out, I will. And the doctor said, hey, I don't know, I understand it. You're healed and all that. Then you forget the covenant you made with God. That's a liar. That's a liar. That's a liar. The judgment spring is up as Hemla. Hemla is a poison in the furrows of the field. You don't want poison in your field. And there is poison in the churches. There are churches that have women preachers. That's a poison. That's a violation of scriptures. There are churches that I got the spirit. That's a poison. You don't want that. There are there's a church that says if you eat and drink the body of Jesus Christ, that's a poison. 
There's a poison. If you say this prayer, that's a poison. Was it Socrates supposedly was killed by poison? Hemlock? That's one of the things that grew up in, in New London, Connecticut. And our parents, that said, don't touch that. Don't eat that. Don't even go near it. The inhabitants of Samaria, that's the capital of Israel. Hosea 10.5, that's, that's Washington, D.C. Of, of, of Israel. Shall fear because of the calves of Beth Haven. What's those calves? That's the golden calves of Jeremiah, uh, the Jeroboam. There's those golden calves. There's the golden arches. You know how the golden arches and the Burger King and the Wendy, you know how they do well today? Women don't know how to cook. I sat today, I went to the laundromat. I hate that play. I, here's this woman, this old woman. She, she, she's doing the laundry. She's got two young girls. And they're, blah, 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 and they're on the phone. Blah, 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 blah. They don't know how to fold. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to cook. They don't know. I had to go to home economics when I went to school. I had to make cheese fondue. Fondue, whatever how you say. And I had to be graded on it. I had to. They gave me. Pants, no. They gave me a shirt. I had to sew that shirt because there was a hole in it. I was graded on it. I think every child should have to take home economics. I think every child should have to take shop. I think every child should be forced to learn an instrument. I don't care if it's even a recorder. You got to learn to do things you don't want to do because life is you don't want to do it. You got to do The boss tells you to do it. You better do it. Oh, no, I quit. Oh, no, I quit. Oh, no, I quit. Now you ain't got enough employees in America. You know, one of the things they're saying about this, this, this formula shortage, there's not enough employees to make the formula. Thank you, Mr. Spock. Treat every child as a king and raise them as every queen, but don't spank them. Okay. For the people thereof shall mourn over it, the calves, as they're being exited, exodus out of their homeland, as they are leaving the, the golden calves of their worship. <laughs> my God is gone. There are Micah. You stealing our gods. You taking our gods. Oh, <laughs> oh I love Moo Moo. <laughs> Where's God? God is not the cow. The priests there are, rejoice on it for the glory thereof because it is departed from it. Those priests are not the Levites. They are the false priests of the calves. They are the false priests of Jeroboam. They are the type of the priests of the Catholic Church. And they have not the authority of God. You know what their thing is? Ha <laughs> ha, look, look, we got all their money. We got a list of all the sins they, they you know, they went in our little closet and told us all their sins. You know, we are in the age of cameras. Oh, they don't see my face. Uh, you check and see if there's a camera. Even then you got to check. You know, you, you don't know where the cameras are. World War I or World War II, I forget which one it is. The Catholic Church used that confessional book to, to, to get you. It shall be also carried to Assyria, and that happened. That's Nineveh, for a present to the King Jared. Hey, King, I got a present for you. What? The Jews. Ephraim, that's Israel, shall receive shame. You know what you're going to get as a Christian when you serve the world and you serve the devil? At the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to get ashes. You're not going to get a reward. If it's not for Jesus Christ, if it's for self, if it's for the world, it is ashes. It is wood, hay, or stubble. And when you're there at the judgment seat of Christ, the heavenly smoke detectors are going to go up. And as the smoke 
glory is on, and you look at the ground, and you see a pile of ashes, and you go through those ashes, you are in tears. Where is a reward? Where is a reward? And when it comes time to cast the crowns before Jesus, you reach to your head, and you need Rogaine. Because you have not a crown. I have no crown to Jesus. I have no rewards to Jesus because my pastor didn't teach me the Bible. But I brought toilet paper to Jesus on his birthday. I gave Jesus Windex for his birthday. I colored eggs for Esther. Not one person I tell about Jesus. Now, I do things so the church will recognize me. For the pastor to honor. But I didn't do it for Jesus. You'll be ashamed. And you can't go back and redo it. There are going to be Christians in heaven that will have no crowns. And when it comes time to cast in those crowns, I don't know if there's shame in heaven, but <laughs> I didn't imagine that pastor of that church, that priest of that church, at the great white throne judgment getting cast off into hell forever. You thought he was a man of God. Jezebel had 450 prophets of Baal, and there were 400 others. If you think every pastor, every preacher, every Sunday school teacher is going to heaven, you have been fooled. For uh, 2 Corinthians 11, Satan has his ministers too. Israel shall be ashamed of of his own counsel. What's his own counsel? Well, it's a religion. It's a all for self. As for Samaria, that's the capital again. Her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. It's, you know, what is that foam of the water? Nothing. It blows away. And whatever foam goes, whatever happens to the foam, it's no value no more. The high places of heaven. You know what the high place? They're, they're, they're these places where you, where Cape Canaveral, we're going to go to Mars. We're going to prove there's no God. We're going to go on the moon. Look, we're on the moon. Look at us, God. See us. And one small step for man, but nothing for Jesus. And God says, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I think they're building a tower down. Come on, let's go check this thing out. And then, oh, look at this great thing. Look at this great tower. Oh, we got cell phone. We got coverage. We can get 126,000 channels. Most of them are Spanish. Let's go down Let's go down there and check that out. Come on. That's it. We're going to Mars. But you ain't getting to God. We got the Hubble, but you ain't going to get a picture of God. High places? Oh, a steeple will lead you to God, a pastor told me. And then another pastor told me, he said, he said well, you know, they had the, tower, the church towers way back when. I said, those church towers had a bell because people did not have an alarm clock. And those church bells would say, it's time for church, come. It's time for church, come. Because there was no alarm clocks. The sin of Israel. Those high places are the sin of Israel. NASA <coughs> is a sin of America. The space race. Come on, even if the technology is space, you couldn't afford it anyway. You can't even afford dialysis. The government's got to step in and help you. 
shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle, that's weeds, shall come up upon their altar. Listen, when the church is gone, the dust will settle upon your altar. Maybe mice and rats or Florida, those flying cockroaches. Your grass will turn brown. Or unless you got the automatic water system. Within time, if uncared for, those altars will fall apart. I've seen plenty of buildings up north in New England. I've seen old barns. There's one barn I, I wish I wish I had ever taken a picture of it before I left Connecticut. I don't know how that that barn is just leaning. I don't know how that and half the walls are gone. I, I don't know how that barn is standing. But you know, one day that barn was brand new. That barn had animals, I would hope, or something. It was built for a reason. It's decayed. I have been in old fields in, in New England. You got the rock wall. And there used to be a farm. There used to be cows. There used to be crops. But there's nothing there no more. The trees and the plants are overgrown. There was a building in, in, in Groton, Connecticut, where, where I visit. Where my father had kept his boat. And right in the middle of this building, a tree grew. A big, huge oak grew. If you don't take care of it, no matter where you live, if you don't take care of it, it's going to go to the weeds, it's going to go to the animal, it's going to decay. And if it ain't for God, it ain't going to do nothing. Because God doesn't care about church buildings. I'm sorry. The building is not the church. We are the church. The, the church has spent so much money, so much time, so much. We're going to have a work program this weekend. for the. Uh, but when was the last time you went out trying to win souls? Well, we brought them in. We brought them in. And you had them say a prayer. Or you gave them a message that went over their head. You can't deal with a corporate people with the gospel. And I, listen, I'm a street preacher. And I've been publicly witnessing. I've been all kinds of places. And you can't witness the two people at the same time. One of them people are going to mess up your testimony. One of them people is going to mess up the message. But if you're dealing with one person, you can, I mean, there's honest questions. You can answer their questions. You can hear them out. They can hear you out. I had a guy one time talking one-on-one. -on -one. He goes, listen, I'm an atheist. By the time we ended that conversation, he was an agnostic. I hope he's saved today. You can't do that with a crowd of people. Listen, the Christians don't even remember what you, the Sunday morning message was Sunday afternoon. And you think your lovely, great message has touched the hearts. Not when your heart is wrong. Not when your church is in idolatry. Not when you're not living for God. And your altars are covered with weeds and thorns and hemlock. They shall say to the mountains, cover us. To the hills, fall on us. That's what's said at the second advent when Jesus Christ shows up. That's when they take their idols and images and throw it to the, to the rats and to the bats and the bulls. Oh, Israel. You imagine God, listen, God's using Hosea and God said, oh, Israel. Yeah, you know, times like that, whatever it's going to be, oh, my stomach, oh, my head hurts. Oh, I don't want to get up today. God's like, oh, Israel. Thou hast sinned from the days of Gibeon. Israel sinned from the beginning. There they stood. The battle of driven against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. 
It is my desire that I should cleanse them, God said. God's not willing that any should perish, would be the New Testament verse. God does not want anybody to go to hell. That's why Jesus showed up. Some people think Jesus showed up so we can celebrate Christmas. You miss. Jesus said as far as his birth, he came to seek that which is lost. He didn't come for presents and trees and wise men and big fat men breaking into your house. And the people should be gathered to against them. That's not good. When they shall bind themselves in the two worlds. And when God's been looking at his whole as crops, as a he, here's a row of field of crops, and there's hemlock, there's weeds, there's thorns, there's thistle, there's no. The vine has been choked. Bind themselves. You're supposed to gather the sheaves and bind the sheaves, not yourself. Here's a guy out there in the wheat field. There's no wheat, so what he does, he ties himself up. What's the, is it Proverbs or Psalms that says the guy that takes the stone and sews it in the sling stone? I mean, can you picture David? All right, I'm going to go against Goliath. Well, how come the rock's not coming out? Because you sold it inside the... Two furrows, that's, that's the paths of the ground. And when Jesus comes, the Bible describes his back, his body, being whipped as the furrows from a cat of nine tails. And then they bind him. That's Jesus Christ. They bound him and brought him to the chief priests. And they bound him and brought him to Pilate. And then they nailed him to the cross. He's ripped. He's cut open. He's pussy. He's bleeding. He's got that water. I don't know what they call it. Water. I, I, I got a... a a boil. I think it's got yellow, it's got uh, white, it's got clear, it's got blood. And that's what Jesus had. Not a boil. I'm talking about the insides, the guts and all that. And Ephraim is as a heifer. That is taught. You, you, you missed the reference back to the judges, didn't you? Well, you know, I forget what the riddle, what the riddle was. As strong and as sweet, and the Philistines go up to the Samson's. What you better tell us what that, that riddle is. We're going to burn your house. And she ends up finding out what it. Is. He said, you, "You had to plow my heifer. You didn't plow my heifer. You would not got the answer. You know, that's my wife. You missed the reference. Oh, maybe your Bible changed the reference. I don't know." Israel is still God's bride. Remember how we started Hosea? Hosea, go out and get yourself a whore. That's my wife. She's a whore. Can you imagine going to this big gala of a, of a, of a thing or, or a Baptist fellowship? A Baptist fellowship. Hi, this is my wife, Gomer. She's a whore. Ooh, the Baptists will love that one. The heifer's taught to work the fields. Pretty much an I've seen in Massachusetts for a little time, little time sprint. I mean, let's say you had to get off the plow. I'm talking about old-fashioned farm. You had to get off that plow. Maybe there's something in the way or whatever. That, that heifer, that cow, that oxen will go a little forward. A little. On its own. Where you got the grinding meal, like where Samson was. You got that, that animal knows how to go round and round and round and round. 
and love to tread out the corn. Okay, so we're not in the field. We're at the threshing floor. This is going round and round and round. Did you miss the reference to Samson? You know what Samson was? Samson was an ass going round and round and round and round and round with no eyeballs. That goes right back to Samson. Samson killed himself. He's in the Heroes of Faith. Every time I talk to somebody, is, is, is suicide a sin and all that? I said, look at Samson. Because, you know, the Catholic Church teaches if you if you commit suicide, you're damned to hell forever. Like, tell the Pope he's damned to hell forever, unless he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what is it? This is, this is, Ephraim, this is, you're going round and round. And, and what's that heifer doing? It's eating corn while it's treading the corn. Mm. You know who Paul likens that to, to Timothy? A preacher. You know what a preacher says? I mean, you know what a preacher is, according to Paul? He's a heifer. He's an ox. He's supposed to be a worker. I know many preachers. They don't, they don't work. They show up to the pulpit, and that's it. I, had, I was just thinking about today. I had one pastor tell me one time there was a family in trouble. I went up to that pastor. I said, will you counsel them? Will you help them? They, they need help. It, it just is drugs. That pastor told me, I don't counsel anybody. And this is bad. I'm a King James church, and but <laughs> I slip in another Bible. You didn't fool me. I'll invite you over to my house for Christmas dinner, and I'll have my ushers at the front door counting you. And then I'll retire. I ran into that passage. Oh, I retired. Man, when I went to school, I, it, it, it was a pastor never retires. That's what I was taught in school. But I passed over upon her fair neck. You got it? says, no. I don't want you. And there's going to be a lot of pastors, a lot of Sundays. God's going to say, you know, there's going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. And there are great people in church. There's going to be that, that one little lonely person in church that nobody loves, nobody really knows, they hate. And you know, that person prayed up a, up a storm. You know, that person passed out gospel tracts. That person showed people scripture. And that person was a nobody in church. But though at, at the judgment seat of Christ, ooh, I'm just great big ox. Look what I'm doing. I was like, give me that lowly ass over there. You know, all that, 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 that ass carried loads, carried loads, carried loads. And, you know, he, he bucked a couple times, and he gave a hard time, and he was stubborn, but, you know, he did his job. And he didn't get no corn. I will make Ephraim to ride. Wait a minute. An ox doesn't ride nothing. A rock, an ox is used sometimes for riding. And not an ox riding. Judah shall plow. Uh-oh. And Jacob shall break his clod. There's that, there's that farming. So, so Israel, Ephraim will be standing on the plow if you've ever seen it. Judah is going to be the workhorse. And the blade will be Israel. We're going into the fields and we're going to plant. I have watered, Apollos planted, and God gave the increase. There it is. You don't believe me? Sow to yourself righteousness. You see, Paul quoted from the Old Testament. 
Paul couldn't quote from himself. He had not written what himself. Do righteousness and you reap mercy. You want mercy? Do right. Break up your foul ground. Break up the sin. Break up the dirt. Break up the dirt. Get ready for God. Listen, I am in a, I'm in a medical mess right now. I don't know if I'm coming. I just prayed today when I woke up this morning, I think it was, or this afternoon. Lord, am I going to get better? Lord, am I going to be the same? Or am I going to start going downhill? I don't know. But, I mean, everybody knows I want a wife and I want a ministry. Even though I am weak, I got to start breaking the ground for whatever God has for me. What's breaking the ground? All right. I'll tell you how, I'll tell you how the farmer's market. Go to work. Oh, I hate, I hate working this place, but go to work. Go to work. Saturday morning. Take a left-hand turn here. Why? I want you to take a left-hand turn here. I ain't going to go down to International and go home and go to bed, Lord. Will you take a left? Okay, I'll take a left. All right, now take a right. What? Take a right. I'm plowing the field. I don't even know I'm plowing the field. I'm like, what am I doing? What, what are you doing, Lord? Take a right. I go around. What's going on here? Oh, it's a it's a farmer's market. Oh, Tracy would love this. I'll tell you what I do. I'll go home and take a nap, Lord. When I, when I get up, we'll go down and check out this farmer's market. Cool. Fine. You're probably listening to me. Break up the ground. I took a nap. We got up, took Tracy down there. Brought some gospel tracks. Plowing the ground. Passed out. Tracy passed out one gospel track and we got in trouble. We hit a rock. And we joked about it. Everything. Always joked about that rock we hit. We went home. Because they kicked us out. Went home. I said, you know what I'm going to do? He goes, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to street preach. All right. My preacher's going to preach. We went that, and we did that for six years. We did it a year after she died. We did it till I got sick. That's breaking ground. Sometimes, as an ox, you got to you got to let God get on that plow and turn you. And you're like, wait, 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 I, I haven't done this before. You just shut up in this. Re this is not the way, I, Lord. I'm a heifer taught. I'm the, this is how I get home. We're gonna. Try. This is not right, Lord. Don't you tell me. For it's time to seek the Lord, and that's a great message for the church. Because the church is seeking everything else, but they're getting ready for the Fourth of July. You ain't free from your sins. Oh, we got freedom. How many things are you taxed and licensed and fees by your government? You can't do this unless the government tells you. You can't do that. The government tells you. You can't do this. The government. You got freedom? Go out in the backyard without the government and say, Honey, to your child, say, I'm going to build you a, a little... little um, a shed, a little house. You can play with your dolls and all that. You can have your own little shed and you know you can have a little couch out there and all that. And then you have um cold enforcement. I just just read the other day here in Volusia County, cold enforcement went in this guy they were taking pictures of this guy's property because he had so many cars. The guy, the guy threatened him. With, he said, I'm going to take your tablet. I'm going to beat you over the head and kill you with it. The guy's in jail now. You're not going to build a shed for your darling little girl without the government saying, yeah, you better. You can't even have a yard sale, a garage sale, without the government giving you permission. 
and then you say you got freedom. Get yourself a gun without a permit. Drive a car without a license. Go, go learn how to drive. Pay for driver's classes. And then drive a car without a license. Drive a car without plates. Rent your house. Rent your room without a certificate of occupancy. And then you tell me about your freedom. I'll tell you, you're full of it. And you tell me how your Republicans are going to give you, they're going to save the world. <laughs> that's a post-tribulation application, and that's an error. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you, that's the second advent, that's for Israel. By the way, that rain is an early and latter rain. After the tribulation period, where there's a period where there's no rain at all. When Jesus Christ comes, not only is he going to rain, but it's going to rain. You ever notice when you read First Kings and Samuels and all that, and such and such was, was king and he reigned 12 years, and such and such was king and he reigned this year and the year, and such and such was king and he reigned. Jesus Christ is going to come and reign for a thousand years and it's going to rain, the early and latter rain, and that early and latter rain would bring the crops to plant. And when those crops come to plant, guess what? you got the story of Ruth and Boaz. And then you got the story of the feast of the... You see, Ruth and Boaz was a story of barley. And I think it's chapter 2 is, or chapter 3. It says something about Ruth stayed to the wheat harvest. Barley first, then the wheat harvest. You know what the wheat harvest is? That's the Feast of the Tabernacle. You know what the Feast of the Tabernacle possibly could be? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. If Egypt doesn't come, you're not getting no rain. I think that's Zechariah. Zephaniah or Zechariah? Rain. Boy, these two chapters have been great. Okay. Ye have plowed wickedness. Oh, if I could touch that one. That's Israel. Look at all their kings, especially Asa. Hey, no. Ahab. The one who got after the whale. He, ye have reaped iniquity. <laughs> you plowed wickedness. You go out there. You play, here, here's your wickedness seeds. And what comes up? Iniquity. You know what the church do? The church puts out seeds of sin. And what do they want? Revival. Ain't going to happen. You can't sow to Esther. I wish he shut up about Esther. You know what the souls of Esther do? Esther gets pregnant and she has a baby December 25th. Tamus. But you want a revival. You are not going to get a revival in three quarters of your church, maybe nine tenths of your church, maybe a whole part of your church ain't seeking God. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Oh, I can tell you about the lies in the pulpits. I had a my one of my classes is what people do, what Sunday school teachers and what pastors do in church. All eyes closed, all heads bow. I see that hand. I have witnessed in a church where a pastor said, I see that hand. My eyes weren't closed. I'm looking. I don't see no hand. I'll sit in a perfect I can see every person. I'm saying to myself, You liar. I've heard past well, you know, this this story, and I'm telling you, let me tell you about this story. Uh, excuse me, that story was told to me in, in preacher school as a preacher story. You can't even say, well, let me tell you the story. It's not me. It's a typical story. No, you got to put your name in it. Like you're somebody. Mm. 
Because thou didst turn in thy way. I mean, trust in thy way. You're trusting in yourself. Read the lad to see in church. Eh? We're rich. We're great. We're wonderful. Blech. And the multitude of mighty men. Look at all the great people I have in this church. Look at our great ushers. Look at our great Sunday school teachers. Look at our great wives. Look at our great pastor. God's up in heaven. Where? Gabriel, micro, uh, uh, magnifying glass? I don't see any. Are any of their names in the Lamb's Book of Life? Not yet, Lord. Oh. There's only one thing I can say, Michael. What's that? Bark bag. And some people don't even know what I'm talking about. Christians. Therefore shall a tomo be um, rise among the people. In your Baptist, you know, foundational financial meeting. And all thy fortresses shall be spoiled. As Solomon spoiled Beth Arbo in the day of battle. Spoils when you go and, and they lose and you go take their swords, you take their gold, you take their... The multitude of thy mighty men. You might they're not so mighty. Look, because the mighty men are now being spoiled in battle. The mother was dashing pieces upon upon her children. Now oh. that's what is sung in Psalms about Babylon. That's what Jeremiah talks about in Lamentations. It happened in Israel. You know, the news, all oh, these children, the, the, the hospital was bombed. Oh, the missile hit these children. All these mothers died. That's war. And I don't believe what you say anyway. So shall Bethel. You know what Bethel was? It used to be the house of God where Jacob met the Lord. Go back to Bethel. One of, the, one of the prophets will tell us Bethel is the place of, 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 of imagery and idolatry of wickedness. The house of God has become a place of... Yeah. You know what the church has become today? Yeah. Close that door. I don't want to look in there. Almost like if, if somebody does step out, if Jesus got his eyes closed. All right, hurry up, shut the door. Okay, welcome. <laughs> Do unto you because of your great wickedness. <laughs> In the morning, there is the second advent, shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. The king of Israel should be cut off. But the king of kings and the lord of lords shall arise with healing in his wings. You know what book that is? That's the same book they say. Bring your tithes, bring your tithes, the storehouse shall rise. And Paul, all he had was a cloak. <laughs> I guess Paul then tithe. We'll, hopefully we'll get to Malachi. I got some, if we ever get to Malachi, I've got some interesting things to do with Malachi. But right now, Hosea.